Um, at J-Site, uh, we're developing a progenitor cell-based therapeutic, and our initial clinical indication is retinitis pigmentosa. And RP is a, an orphan disease. It's genetic. There are many underlying mutations. It gets its name from what's visualized by the ophthalmologist upon looking into the eye. Uh, there's an obvious pigmentary disturbance uh, across the entire retina. And then the perspective from the patient uh, is different. It's a uh, progressive disease in which uh, night blindness is followed by tunnel vision and ultimately culminating in complete blindness. Now, the crux of the problem is that the photoreceptor cells are lost in this disease. On the left, you see a healthy-looking retina, and on the right is a retina from a patient with retinitis pigmentosa. The uh, rods and cones are illustrated uh, at the top of this slide. You see the rods in green, and the cones are tucked in between. And there's obviously quite a bit of destruction that's centered on those particular cell types. Now, to understand the potential therapeutic opportunity, we have to drill down on the different contribution of these two cell types to the disease. The rods are the cells that express the mutation, and the rods express it exclusively. Um, however, rods are only important in humans uh, for night vision. And another interesting aspect is that the rods maintain their function despite the mutation. Uh, until late in the disease. Cones, on the other hand, do not express the mutation, um, and yet they're important for most of our visual function as a human. Um, however, unfortunately, these cells are lost late in the progression of the disease uh, due to a bystander effect. So I think you can appreciate that even if we just rescue the cones in RP, it would be very helpful to the patient how to do that. So our cell of interest is the retinal progenitor cell. And here I just want to point out uh, the difference between uh, pluripotent ES cells derived from the pre-implantation blastocyst and uh, multipotent retinal progenitors. Like other multipotent progenitor cell types, they're derived from developing tissue during uh, histogenesis, in this case, retinogenesis. And uh, on the right, you can see what RPCs look like in culture. Quick overview of our therapy. Again, we're starting with the RPC. It's an allogeneic cell type. We're going to deliver it into patients with RP. This delivery is by standard intravitreal injection, which is performed under topical anesthesia. So as you can see, this is something you can perform very quickly in the office in a matter of seconds, not counting all the preparation that goes into it. Um, we elected not to immunosuppress the patients in this trial, um, and we're aiming for a neurotrophic mechanism of action as opposed to cell replacement. In terms of milestone, we've, we've been very fortunate to have strong support from CIRM, and that support has included a disease team therapy award. This award uh, funded the preclinical development, the IND filing, and the initial phase uh, clinical trial. Uh, for preclinical, we partnered with NCATS as part of their TRD program, and uh, we've had numerous interactions with the FDA, uh, including orphan designation and a pre IND meeting in 2012. Uh, we filed the IND and it went active uh, early in 2015. Our clinical trials based on product that was manufactured in partnership with UC Davis. Uh, then the, uh, the doses are prepared in a dedicated dose preparation facility at UC Irvine in the CIRM funded building seen right behind us in that image. Um, and then we deliver this product as seen here uh, to our two clinical sites, which include the Gavin Herbert Eye Institute at UC Irvine and Retina Vitreous Associates up in Los Angeles. So this is our first trial. 
which was divided into two cohorts of patients based on initial visual acuity. The first cohort was more severely affected. Their vision ranged from hand motions to 2200. The second cohort had somewhat better vision from 2200 up to 2063. Uh, enrollment began in June of 2015 and was completed in July of 2016 and a total of 28 patients were enrolled. Uh, after 12 months of follow-up, uh, the, the trial was completed in August of this year, and the data is in the process of being locked, and we look forward to being able to present that data. Safety's been good. Uh, we passed all four interim DSMB safety reviews. Uh, the product's been well tolerated. There was one SAE that's been investigated and was deemed to be unrelated to the cells. Specifically, there's been no evidence of tumors, epiretinal membrane, or immune rejection of the graft. In terms of efficacy, I just caution that this is a single-arm open-label study. We've seen initial indications of activity that form the basis of our plan for the Phase 2B study, and again, we Look forward to sharing that data shortly. Um, beyond the first trial, patients, when they exited the initial trial, they were entered into an extension trial with the option to dose the fellow eye, and that's been a popular choice with the patients. Uh, there's been 24 out of 28 people so far have elected to be dosed and have been dosed, and a few more coming. We've been fortunate to get the RMAT designation from the FDA, and we did have our first meeting with the agency uh, this summer, um, and uh, the big topic was the uh, phase 2B. So we have approval in place for our next trial, um, and uh, it's been funded through uh, CIRM and also uh, matching funds raised by JSITE uh, through individual investors, and this trial is a controlled trial with patients masked in terms of their treatment arm, and it is actively enrolling at this time. Uh, so I thank you all for your attention, and I want to thank everybody who's contributed to this project over the years and continues to do so. Thank you very much. I'll take any questions. All right, thank you.